JW Napic, and welcome to video five of the SEL Secure Communications video series. In this video, we will be discussing how to configure the RTAC SEL server to allow access into the system from the 3620 into the RTAC, as well as creating the device configuration baselining system for the relays, polling mechanisms, and the event report collection. To start this off, we will open up the Accelerator RTAC software. This software will be presenting you with a login the user credentials of admin, all lowercase, and tail, T-A-I-L, all capital, will allow you to log in to the local database stored on your PC. We will be creating a new project using the RTAC Axion template and the RTAC firmware version of R136 or newer. We are providing a project name meaningful to your system. Click Create and the project will initialize. Once initialized, you will see the project tree on the left-hand side of the screen. In this, we will right-click on the Devices folder and start adding in our devices. We will need a 3530 type device using SEL protocol. This will be our engineering access port coming into the system, as well as the team stopping point for the event report collection. We will be using the connection type server Ethernet tunneled serial and insert this device. We will also be adding in the devices of our 351S and our 451 using SEL protocol. Remembering that the 351S is a client serial connection, inserting it, and our SEL 451 being our Ethernet connection. Once inserted, we will come to the 3530 device that we started with, noting that it is a tunneling mode of Telnet, and we will be using the server IP port of 3001. If you remember back in video two, we selected this when setting up the configuration for the RTAC in QuickSet. We will be allowing anonymous devices to come in, so we will set this to true. This is done so that we can allow any IP address for technician laptops to come in, and we do not have to set specific IP addresses for specific technicians. We will save this project by clicking the SEL button and save. Alternatively, you can use the key shortcut of Control S. Next, we will come into the 351S. Note that we are using COM port 1, a baud rate of 19.2, and we will use the virtual port number of 1. If you recall back in video 2, we discussed having the pass-through port set to 1 for the 351S, this is where we tie those settings together. The level one and level two passwords you will note are obfuscated with stars. They are defaulted to the same default passwords that are used within the relays of otter and tail. However, once the system is complete, these passwords will be changing and will be stored on the RTAC for what the new active passwords are. Coming into the 451, we will do the same thing. Note that this is a little bit different, such that we have ethernet settings so we will be looking at Telnet connection into the relay. Default server IP port of 23 will be fine. We will come down and note that the virtual port number of 253 is used, which is what we used in video two. The IP address of the 451 in the system is 192.168.4.3. Saving to make sure that we keep our settings. Furthermore, we will come back to the 351S device and go into the POU pin settings. In this device, we will be changing the Enable Event Collection POU default value to true. This will allow event reports to be collected automatically from the 351S through the RTAC. Remember that the 451 we are collecting directly from the relay. The final steps in settings, we will come to the Settings tab, click on the Advanced Settings checkbox, and scroll down to the bottom of the screen. Note that we have the device GUID setting, this ties into the global device ID that we configured back in video two within QuickSet. If you recall, we had SEL 351S and SEL 451, repeating the steps for 451. Once the settings have been completed, we will come up to the taskbar and we'll click the Go Online button. This will allow us to activate the settings within the ER tag. We will use an admin account created during commissioning of the RTAC to log in and send. Anytime that the settings are new and different, after you click this blow button, you will see that the settings have changed. Send settings and overwrite question. 
we will click yes in order to activate these settings. After a short while, after going online, we can proceed to one of the devices, controller tab, and we'll see the offline tab change from true to false as soon as the configuration process has been completed and the RTAC and the relay are successfully communicating. As you can see, we have successfully gone online and the devices are communicating properly. Default settings within these devices have been configured to allow you to check baseline of your system configuration. If you remember back in the settings tab, we have the advanced settings checkbox selected. And at the very top, there is a check IED configuration. What this does is every, by default, 8,000 milliseconds, we will send these commands found in the check ID configuration, the ID and file read cfg.txt. These commands allow us to check for firmware and settings on a regular basis to allow for a baseline and confirming that our baseline is still in place. If the check of these settings are not met, there is an alarm that can be set and sent back to your SCADA system. This concludes this video. In this video, we learned how to configure the RTAC for the cell server device, as well as the relay devices for event collection and IED configuration baselining. In the next video, we will be putting it all together and showing how the system actually works. Thank you for watching.